We are making bacon today. You're on a low sodium diet. Thought you'd never be able to have bacon again. Our bacon is going to end up being 155 milligrams of sodium for the whole pound. All bacon is made from pork belly. We just got to find you some. Don't buy it at Costco. Don't buy it at Trader Joe's. If you see it in the meat department, wrapped up nice like a roast, uh -huh. you don't want that. It's packed with saline. A lot of sodium. Some of our food city markets have it. You can Google Mexican market or carniceria. It's a Mexican market. Almost all of them have it. But give them a call. It comes to them frozen and they keep it in the freezer and just slice it as it's needed. And sometimes you get real nice slices. Sometimes you get them that part is a little thicker than others. But it doesn't make any difference because the end product is really good. I've been making bacon for a long time. Two times I got slices like this. These are cut in half. It comes with the rind on it. I don't really like the rind, so I cut it off. It takes one and an eighth pound of pork belly. You cut the rind off to give you one pound. My mom said that when we were babies, we teethed on the bacon rind. My dad did not like bacon without it. It's hard to find bacon that's got it on there. So he searched around, found a little market not far from our house. That's where dad got his bacon. Once you locate where you can get your pork belly and check with them that they can slice it thin for you, you can order it to be picked up on a certain date. I always call before I go out because sometimes they don't have any. They sell out. So you drive out to the place where you're going to buy it and they're out. And they tell you, oh, we won't have any for two days or three, whatever it is, but got to get that pork belly. Got to get it frozen where it is not soaked in saline. Because I don't use the rind. I asked the butcher if they could just cut it off, and he said, nope. It's against federal regulations. We just have to cut it off. I use my kitchen shears and cut it. In the description for this video is a discounted coupon where you can buy my whole low-sodium breakfast course for ten dollars. We make breakfast sausage, chicken fried steak, pancakes, biscuits, all kinds of stuff for you to enjoy for your breakfast and they are low sodium. I suggest that you make your one pound with my recipe so we get it all finished and you do a taste test. You might want a little bit more garlic or pepper or paprika. Then you can doctor the recipe up and make it perfect for you. You're going to want to make more bacon, so you've got it in your freezer all the time. I got a little head start today. Have the one pound in this bag because I want to show you at the end, how much bacon you can have for 155 milligrams of sodium. In my bag, I've got one tablespoon of pure maple syrup. But because I'm also doing another five pounds, I used it up. Kirkland, which is Costco brand, pure maple syrup has no sodium. At your grocery store, the pure maple syrup has between 0 and 10 milligrams 
or a quarter cup. We got one tablespoon of pure maple syrup, one tablespoon of water, an eighth of a teaspoon of imitation maple flavoring, one eighth teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons smoked paprika, two teaspoons of liquid smoke, half a teaspoon ground black pepper, mix it all together, put it in a bag with your pork belly, and squish it every once in a while. You want it to marinate at least an hour or two or three or four today, because I'm doing so much. I'm going to let it marinate overnight and I'll finish it tomorrow. I've got some errands I've got to run. This is my five pounds and I'm going to stir it throughout the day. Let it soak up all that good stuff. And I don't know why I do this. I take my fork and I do this because I think maybe I'll get more seasonings inside. I don't think it makes any difference. I just like doing it. Pork belly is ready to go in your refrigerator. When your bacon gets done, you're going to want to have a BLT or two because you have not had lettuce, tomato, bacon sandwiches for quite a while. Ezekiel has a bread, it's got an orange wrapper. You can find it at your grocery store either in the freezer, sometimes on the shelf. It has no sodium. You can order from Healthy Heart Market a rice loaf be delivered to your house. It has no sodium. Both of those breads are kind of a heavy wheat bread. If you like that kind, then you can have it. Zero sodium bread. When it comes to the mayonnaise, if you take two tablespoons of mayonnaise, one tablespoon of Knudsen's Hampshire sour cream, and mix the two together, instead of having 210 milligrams in three tablespoons of mayonnaise, you'll have 150. You put a little bit on it. Check your sour cream. Most sour creams are right at 65 milligrams for two tablespoons. The Knudsen's Hampshire has 10. Tomorrow, we're going to finish this bacon. Good morning! If you decide to try the rice loaf from Healthy Heart Market, I uh, kind of forgot to tell you. You read the label, it says to either microwave it or toast it before you eat it. Its shelf life in your pantry is over a year. Once it's opened, you can keep it in your refrigerator or your freezer. Another place to search for pork belly is Mexican grocery store. When you find your pork belly, you have to be pretty specific and ask them how thin they can cut it. I've asked for it to be paper thin, and they said, yeah, we can do that. I order it, go pick it up, and it's one-third of an inch. I cannot use that. So I don't buy it. Normally, they're pretty good about that. The only thing that's in our marinade that has sodium in it is the liquid smoke. It's got tin. We need parchment paper covered baking sheets with the cooling rack on the top. The one pound did all of this because it's really thin. The slices are one-tenth of an inch. I can go with one-eighth, but ooh, this is nice. This is nice. These are full-size baking sheets. We're going to get a lot of bacon. The pork belly is twice as long as this is, 
So you always have to cut it in half. And I don't think I've ever gotten it with this nice slices. They're just, you know, different sizes. A lot of times the butcher will say, I'm sorry, but part of it's not that thin. It's okay. It's all right because it turns out wonderful too. Uh, our next step is to bake these at 200 degrees for an hour and a half. They're going to shrink. We'll just see how much bacon we get for 155 milligrams of sodium. At my grocery store, there is a lower sodium bacon. The lowest I can find has 1,440 milligrams per pound. This is a whole lot better. The parchment paper sure makes cleanup a lot easier. Anytime I can do that, mm -hmm, I'm all for it. I hope you're going to be able to see all three of these pans. It did shrink, but we still have a lot of bacon. At this point, it's ready to freeze. After it cools, it will be frozen in freezer bags with slices separated with wax paper. Then when you want to use your bacon, take your frying pan between low and medium heat, no higher than that because we don't want to burn the syrup. Usually it takes about 15 minutes for it to finish cooking. We just want to crisp it up a little bit and take some more of that fat off. Our bacon is not suitable for the microwave. My little white plate is almost seven inches in diameter. Our bacon slices, after they're fried, are between one half inch and three quarters inch wide, and they range from four inches to seven inches long. Low sodium cooking does not have to be bland. Our bacon looks great, has wonderful flavor, and of course it is low sodium. We got 42 slices. They're not huge, but they sure are nice. It comes up to 3.69 milligrams of sodium per slice. Our bacon is crispy. Mm-hmm. It's really good. And it flavors potato soup wonderfully. When it's in the potato soup, kind of got a ham flavor to it. Possibilities are endless. But today, you get to enjoy bacon for a change.